One of the reasons I love Kyoto Sue is that it doesn't have a gear treadmill. This means that, unlike in most other MMOs, if you get good gear, it will stay good gear forever. There's not gonna be some new patch or expansion which adds better gear and basically makes all of your old gear useless. Gear from all the way back in 2015 is still the best gear today. That is awesome, but how do you actually like get the good gear? This can be a little bit complicated if you're new. Fortunately, I am here to help. Let's talk about gearing up in Guild Wars 2. While you're leveling, I would not worry too much about your gear. But once you're at level 80, there are three gear tiers which are relevant to you. First up is exotic gear. This gear tends to be pretty easy to get and it's also pretty good. Often you can just buy exotic gear on the trading posts. The next tier beyond exotic is ascended gear. Ascended gear is slightly better than exotics and it has the best stats in the game, but you cannot just buy it on the trading posts. You have to go on a bit of a journey to get it. Finally, there is legendary gear. Legendary gear actually has the same amount of stats as the Sanders gear, so it's not actually better. But it does offer some amazing quality of life features, like free stat swapping, free transmutation, and using it on multiple characters at once. In one of my future videos, we will talk about starting your legendary journey. But for now, let's start with some gear that won't take you years to obtain. Here is my personal recommendation for your gear. If I were you, I would start working towards getting yourself Ascended Weapons and Ascended Trinkets. These are not too difficult to get, but they have the highest possible stats in the game and they are significantly better than Exotics. For now, I am going to tell you to skip Ascended Armor and just get Exotic Armor instead. Ascended Armor is better than Exotic Armor, but compared to the Trinkets and Weapons, Ascended Armor is a much smaller stat boost, while also being kind of a pain to get. If you want to survive in the highest tier fractal dungeons, you will eventually need to get a Senate armor, but exotic armor will serve you just fine in pretty much all other contents. Alright, that is enough waffling. How do we actually get any of this gear? This is the moment where you want to decide which combination of stats you want on your gear. On this wiki page, you can see all of the different stat combinations. Be aware, some stat types require you to have a specific expansion to get them. For example, you can only get Harrier's gear if you have Buff of Fire. If you are following a build from, for example, Hearthstone.gg or Snowcrystals.com, just look at what stat type they recommend and go for that one. Popular stat combinations are Berserkers for power DPS, Vipers for Kona DPS and Harriers for healers. There is also Minstrels for if you want to tank a Raid Pulse and Celestial for if you want to have an absolute breeze surviving in open walls. If you are going for Berserker stats, which I imagine a lot of you are, you are in luck. Berserker stats are a core stat, which means that Berserker gear tends to be like super easy to get. To get exotic Berserker armor, just go to the trading post and search for Zeds for light armor, Nikas for medium armor or Defanas for heavy armor. You can also search for Berserker's armor on the trading post, but the name sets that I just mentioned are just cheaper and have the exact same stats. There are some other name sets as well, which are on your screen right now, but those stat types tend to not be very popular. If you're going for any of the other stat types, you do not have such luck. You can buy Vipers, Harriers, Minstrels and Celestial armor on the trading post, but it is a lot more expensive. A full set can run you 60 to 80 gold, which is quite a lot if you are new to the game. So instead, I recommend getting yourself to Verdant Brink in the Heart of Forms expansion. The vendor at the start of this map will sell you stat selectable bladed armor boxes for the map currency and some gold. You get the map currency just for doing events in Verdant Brink. You will also get Pax Crowbars, which you can use to open airship cargo scattered across the map, and opening those will give you even more map currency. You can right-click these armor pieces after you get them and pick from any stat type. Choose wisely though, you cannot change the stats anymore after you choose. You will notice that the vendor does not sell any chest pieces. The way to get one is to succeed the meta event on this map at tier 4. That basically just means the meta needs to go really well and pulling this off will require some organization. If you want to do this, just check the event timer on the wiki to see when the Verdant Pink meta is up and keep an eye out on LFG to see if any commander is doing a tier 4 attempt. 
Congratulations, you now have exotic armor. Next, let's talk about trinkets. Like I mentioned before, I highly recommend going for Ascended Trinkets instead of bothering with exotic ones. They are a pretty big stat boost and getting them is really not too difficult. If you are going for a core stat like Berserkers or Celestial, you are once again in luck. Getting trinkets for you is super easy. I wonder if all the Connie players and healers are like reconsidering their life choices right now. If you are going for one of these easy stat types, you can just buy your amulets, trinkets and rings with laurels from the laurel vendor. On the screen, you can see the available berserker trinkets and also the available celestial trinkets, if you are going for those. Be aware, these trinkets are unique, which means that you can only equip one of each at a time. So, if you are buying two berserker rings, make sure to get the Ring of Red Death and the Crystalline Band, instead of buying the same one twice. Getting the laurels can take a little while, but you can actually get a discount. If you play World vs. World and have some badges of honor, you can go to the laurel vendor in World vs. World instead and buy the rings and the amulets for badges of honor and a reduced laurel price. You can also use different currencies altogether to buy these trinkets. If you like doing guild missions, you can spend the guild commendations from those for cheap ascended accessories. And if you like doing fractals, you can buy the rings cheaply for pristine fractal relics. All in all, loads of options. Just pick whichever seems the most fun to you. Now, let's continue with all the less fortunate players who are not going for berserkers or celestial stats. Your trinkets with non-core stats are a little bit tougher to obtain. No laurels, guild accommodations or cheap fractal wings for you. The easiest way to get your trinkets is through a living world. The different living world maps each have a map material which you can spend on items like ascended trinkets. You get these map materials by either gathering them in the map or doing hearts and then buying them from the hearts vendor. The trinkets you can buy of these materials are stat selectable, so you can pick any stat that you are looking for. There are loads of Living World episodes with loads of different ways to get your trinkets, but the two that I would recommend getting are A Crack in the Ice, which is episode 3 from Living World Season 3, and A War Eternal, which is episode 6 from Living World Season 4. A Crack in the Ice will give you access to a Bitter Frost Frontier. The clock under the Soros Eclipse waypoints will sell you Ascended Rings, Accessories and back pieces for Winterberries and Unbound Magic. Winterberries are the map material of Bitterfrost Frontier. To get them, you can just run around the map and gather them. To buy the trinkets, you will also need Unbound Magic. To get this, just eat some of the Winterberries that you've gathered. The reason that A Crack in the Ice is such a useful episode is that there is no daily limit to how many winterberries you can harvest. Sure, there are only so many on the map that you can gather, but if you switch to a different character, you can just go and gather all of them again. If you try doing this on a different Living Walls map, the map material will stop spawning after a little while, but this is not the case for winterberries. If you don't have a lot of characters, it might take you a couple of days to get enough winterberries. The win Winterberries respawn after about 24 hours, but if you do have multiple characters, you can just farm tons of winterberries in a very short time period. Again, be careful, these trinkets are unique. This means that you cannot just get the same ring and the same accessory a second time. We will have to go get a different ring and a different accessory. The other episode that I recommend for getting trinkets is a War Eternal from Living World Season 4. In this map, you can gather Mistborn modes, and you can then spend those on another accessory, another ring, and an amulet. You can only harvest a certain amount of Mistborn modes every day, but if you do the events on this map, including the meta event, you will get loads of Mistborn modes. It shouldn't take you that long to get the rest of your trinkets this way. An honorable mention is also episode 1 of the Ice Fruit Saga. If you complete the collection The Hunger in this episode, the codan in this house will sell you Ascended Amulets for Karma and Biora materials. And there you go, that is a full set of Ascended Trinkets. Getting these with Living Vault is actually very easy, but there are also some other, slower ways to get them. Let's quickly talk about these. Remember how you could buy cheap core rings with Fraxel currency? Well, you can actually also buy fully stat-selectable rings, amulets and accessories in Fraxels. This way, you can get trinkets with the other stat combinations, but they cost like way more pristine Fraxel relics. You have to do quite a lot of Fractals to get these. 
Are you a PvP enjoyer? If you do ranked PvP and complete these League reward tracks, you get Ascended Shards of Glory, which you can then spend on stat selectable rings, amulets and accessories. And it is the same for Volt vs Volt. If you play a bunch of Volt vs Volt, you will get skirmish claim tickets from the always active skirmish reward track. You can then spend these tickets on stat selectable rings, amulets and accessories. You can also buy trinkets inside of the different raids. You buy these trinkets with the Magnetite Charge raid currency. All of that being said, I still highly recommend you get your trinkets from the Living Wolves maps and Seth. That method is just very cheap and very fast. If you decide to forgo for any of the other methods though, you might find yourself missing a back piece. There are loads of ways to get a back piece, but one easy option is to create the quiver of a thousand arrows in the Mystic Forge with the following recipe. Alright, that was quite a lot, but you have now gotten yourself exotic armor and a full set of Senna trinkets. The only thing that remains is getting yourself a Senna's weapons. A straightforward way to obtain those Senna's weapons is to just craft them. Nowadays, crafting a Senna's weapons is actually not that expensive, but you will need to level the corresponding crafting discipline all the way to level 500. If you, for example, want to craft an Ascended Greatsword, you will need 500 weaponsmithing. You can use the website gw2crafts.net to easily level a crafting discipline to level 500. This website will tell you exactly what items to buy, what recipes to discover and what to craft to reach max level crafting. Once you have 500 crafting, you can use kiltis2efficiency.com's crafting page to get an easy step-by-step -step guide on crafting your weapon of choice. Some of the materials for Senate gear are time gators, meaning you can only craft them once a day. If you're impatient, you can set Guilds to Efficiency's daily cooldown setting to buy. This way, the website will assume that you want to avoid time gates and just buy the materials instead. While you're crafting weapons, you will notice that at some point you will have to craft an inscription for the stat type that you want. For a Berserker's weapon, you will need to craft a Berserker's inscription. For core stats like Berserker's, you can just buy the recipe for these inscriptions from the vendors at the crafting stations. For expansion stats, you will have to unlock these recipes somewhere else. For example, to craft a Viper's inscription, you will need to buy the recipe from a vendor in Tarir. To figure out where to get the recipe for your inscription, you are probably best off just checking the Guilders 2 wiki. That is the crafting method to get Ascended Weapons, and I really think it is not as bad as it sounds. However, if you don't want to do any crafting, there are a couple of other options to get Ascended Weapons. First up is the Knight of the Thorn side story. You unlock this after the Heart of Thorns main story, and if you do it, you get a free stat selectable greatsword, sword, dagger, shield, or scepter. Note that during this side story, you will need to get a vision crystal, but you can get one for free from the Ascended Crafting Box at the end of the 30 days of login rewards. Another option to get Ascended weapons is to do a so called specialization collection. After you finish training an elite specialization, you unlock a collection which will give you an ascended weapon for that specialization. So, if you finish unlocking Daredevil, you will unlock a collection which will give you a special ascended Daredevil staff, bow. This can be a great option if you don't want to level crafting, but do be warned. The Heart of Force elite specialization collections require an expensive mystic weapon, so doing these can actually be a little bit more expensive than just crafting the ascended weapon yourself. Another thing that's good to know is that the Ascended weapons you get from these collections might not allow you to pick the stat combination that you want. Fortunately, there is a solution. Let's talk about stat swapping. You can actually rather easily change the stat combinations on Ascended weapons and Ascended armor. So if you ever have some armor or weapons which do not have the right stats for you, you do not have to worry. On the screen right now, you can see the Mystic Forge recipes for changing stats. For example, to change a weapon to Berserker stats, just throw the weapon into the forge with this recipe, with a Berserker's exotic inscription. And bam, now we get the weapon with the stat we want. However, there is another caveat. The inscriptions for some stat types are untradeable, which means that you might have to craft them yourself. This will require foreign Huntsman, Artificer or Weaponsmithing, so you might still have to do some crafting. Let's talk about another way to get an Ascended Weapon. If you're down to do some group content, you can also buy them with Raid or Strike Currency. 
This is usually my acquisition method of choice. You can just spend the currency that you get from these encounters and some goals, and the Descendant's weapon will instantly be yours. If you're new to the game, doing instance content like Razor Strikes might seem a bit intimidating, but a good beginner-friendly choice is to do these so-called easy, free Ice Boot Saga strike missions. The first three strike missions from Ice Boot Saga are really easy, and group 40s pop up in LFG all the time. If you do these free easy strikes every single day, you will easily stock up on blue profit shards, and you can use those to buy Ascendant's weapons. The weapons from Ice Boot Saga Strikes do have one caveat. You can actually only choose from the core stat combinations. So if you need an expansion stat combination, you will not be able to pick it. But again, that doesn't have to be a problem, because like I explained before, we can just stat swap them in the Mystic Forge. You might have to do some crafting though to get the required inscription. If you get a weapon with End of Dragons strike currency, those are the green shards, or with race currency, you can just pick any stat you want. So if you really don't want to do any crafting, doing those will be your best bet. Life is just a lot harder if you are not going for Berserker stats. And with that very long ramble, you are now officially properly geared. You have exotic armor, you have ascended weapons and ascended trinkets. You are generally ready for almost all content in the game. And you will be ready forever, because your gear will still be good a couple of years from now. But if you really want to min-max, you could also consider replacing your exotic armor with Ascendant armor. Obtaining Ascendant armor is actually pretty similar to obtaining Ascendant weapons. You can once again decide to craft it, but you will have to level your crafting discipline to level 500. And this is probably the best option if you are not into doing instance content. If you however are into doing instance content, you can also get Ascendant armor with raid and strike currency. Although, getting Ascendant Armor with Strikes will probably take you a long time. Raids are probably a better option, because you will farm up the required currency much faster. Raids also just drop a lot of Ascendant gear, and you can use the Mystic Forge to stat swap this to the stat combination you want. If you are considering getting into raids, I actually made a guide video on how to get started with raids a couple of weeks ago, so check that out if you're interested in going this route. If you're willing to do some raids, you can also do the Legendary Armor Precursor Collections. I can almost hear you think right now, Legendary Armor? I thought you were going for Ascendant Armor. You heard me correctly. You can do this collection to get the Precursor set, which you can eventually turn into Legendary Armor, but the Precursor set itself is already a set of Ascendant gear. If you do the Envoy Armor 1 collection, which will require you to kill some raid bosses, you get a full free set of stat selectable Ascendant Armor. A full set! Just like instantly! If you finish this collection, you can also do the Envoy Armor 2 collection, which will require you to do some stuff in the Bastion of the Penitent Wraith. This collection will give you another full set of Ascendant Armor. It is genuinely really awesome, but again, you will have to do some raiding. If you do get the second set, you do gotta be a little bit careful with it though. This set is technically your precursor armor, and if you ever want to craft legendary armor in the future, you will need this set. If you stat swap this armor in the Mystic Forge, it will actually lose its precursor status. So, if you're going for this free second set of armor, make sure you don't stat swap it somewhere along the way. And that finally brings me to the end of this video. You should now know how to gear up in Guild Wars 2, and you even know how to get a Senate's armor if you decide you want to do this. If you have any questions, the best way to ask me is to drop by my Twitch stream over at twitch.tv slash Lorenacy. I am live five nights a week. You can also ask questions in our fantastic Discord, which is filled with super nice and super helpful Guild Wars 2 people. And that is it for me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.